Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be discussing the effectiveness of meditation and different ways that we distract ourselves from healthy behaviors. If you are new here, hello, my name is Fakery and I want us to see beyond our own limitations and our own thoughts of meaning and purpose and different ways that we distract. Well, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. If you like Zen stories and want to get beyond your own distractions for spiritual progress, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We've got lots of videos coming your way. Today, our story is from the Mumon Khan, Case 9. This is Daitsu Chisho Buddha. A monk asked Koyo Seijo, Daitsu Chisho Buddha sat in Zazen for 10 kalpas and could not attain Buddhahood. He did not become a Buddha. How could this be? Seijo said, Your question is quite self explanatory. The monk asked, He meditated so long, how could he not attain Buddhahood? Seijo said, Because he did not become a Buddha. That's our koan for today. We're going to start off with the crazy route, all right? So I love, 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 Seijo says that your question is quite self-explanatory. The question instantiates reality. All of this is mind-made. Everything is mind-made. Everything that you think is happening is causing reality to change. If you think that this guy, Daichisho Buddha, did not become Buddha, he did not become Buddha. And it's just because of your thoughts. And it's even in his name, his name is Buddha. His name is Daitsu Chisho Buddha. He is a Buddha. He is spiritually enlightened. But the monk asking this question, having that doubt that uh, going into Zazen, doing meditation for a very long time does not lead to Buddhahood, then he does not go into Buddhahood. That's one really far out there explanation. Uh, another thing is that you cannot become Buddha. A person cannot become Buddha. A thing cannot become Buddha because, well, there's two reasons. For the first reason, everything already is Buddha. You already are Buddha. You already are enlightened. You cannot become enlightened. You are enlightened already. I am enlightened. Everything's already, it's already there. There's nowhere to go. There's no need for progression. So if you're thinking that you need to progress, you're thinking too much. You have a misconception of what it means to be enlightened. That's one reason why you cannot become the Buddha. Uh, another reason is because if you are thinking of a thing, um, then there's a limitation. So if you are becoming the Buddha, um, you, you, what you think you are is not, is not you, right? You, uh, you being the body and the mind and all of the circumstances that led up to whatever you think you are, all of that is not you. That just scratch that all away. All of those qualities that you think you have, you do not have. None of them are you. So these are some reasons why you cannot become Buddha. Nothing can become Buddha um, because there is no you to become Buddha. There is no thing to become Buddha. Um, these are some of the, <laughs> we're going crazy again here. These are the far out uh, ideas that are in this koan. We'll move on to the commentary before getting into practical applications of this. <laughs> Mumon's comment. I allow for the barbarian's realization, but I do not allow for his understanding. When an ignorant man realizes it, he's a sage. When a sage understands it, he is ignorant. Beautiful! Oh, I love this so much. Okay, I will allow for the realization, but not for his understanding. So we have to realize that when he's calling him a barbarian, this is high praise. This is really high praise. And when he's being disrespectful in such a direct way, he's he means that this person is a really great um, monk, um, priest rather, a really great priest. So he's saying that Koyo Sejo is spot on spot on saying that he did not become Buddha because he could not become Buddha, because he did not become Buddha. Um, but he does not allow for the understanding. So what he's saying is he does not project consciousness, we'll say. He, he's not projecting consciousness to the statement. It's, it's almost as if, um, let's say you look at a clock and you can say, wow, I allow for the clock to have the right time, but I know that the clock doesn't understand the right time. Or even further, I know that the clock doesn't have batteries in it. So I know it's not telling me the right time because of the function of the clock. It just happens to be right. Um, this is what Mumon is saying about the barbarian, which again is a very, very, very good high praise because if he's saying that the person who is doing it doesn't understand, uh, he's saying that there's emptiness when the person responds, when Seijo is responding to the question uh, that the monk is asking, he is completely empty. He has no understanding. He has no, um, 
There is no consciousness. There is nothing going on. It's completely empty. Um, of course, empty means something different, slightly different in, in this context, but I think you sort of kind of understand. Seijo is not concerned. He's not thinking. He's not attached to thoughts. He's not attached to consistency. Um, he's not concerned with the progress of the non-attained Buddha, right? He, he, he doesn't even care about the fact that the guy's name is Buddha, right? Daichi Chisho Buddha is definitely Buddha. It's in his name. He's, he's not concerned with this fact. Um, he's just saying, yeah, he's not a Buddha because you don't think he's a Buddha. Um, <laughs> and he's not concerned about the progress. He doesn't care. It's not changing him. It's not changing um, how he does Zazen or when he does Zazen or if he does Zazen and any of that stuff. He has complete freedom from the situation that Daitsu Chisho Buddha may have gone through in his ten kalpas of Zazen. When the ignorant man realizes that he is a sage, when the sage understands that he's, he is ignorant, this is just telling you right on, do not understand, do not think, do not ask, do not talk, do not know, don't know, don't know. You want to have the don't know mind. You want to realize directly. You want to feel it. Feel it is even the right word. You have to realize it to understand that feeling it, understanding it, <laughs> thinking about it, talking about all of these things are just the wrong way to interact with. The way to interact with Zen is not in the normal way that you interact with everything, except it's exactly the normal way that you interact with everything. But it's impossible to talk about if you got to be, you got to get there. You got to get there. So thinking creates the reality that we have. Right? This is what the monk is doing. He's thinking and he's changing the past. He's instantiating the past to make this Buddha not have been Buddha. What happens when you don't think? What happens when you stop understanding? Where does everything go? What happens? That is, um, that is fundamentally what we what you want to what we want to do is this fundamentally um, not being attached to your thoughts and see the world for what it is through the dharma eye okay I'm, I'm getting a little carried away here um but that's that's something i really like we'll move on to the poem better emancipate your mind than your body <laughs> when the mind is emancipated the body is free when both body and mind are emancipated even gods and spirits ignore worldly power haha <laughs> Move on again with the tricky, tricky, trickiness here. Um, he is he is showing us dualities. He does this very often. He 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 presents us with dualities, and sometimes he just wants us to be tricked and see the duality, and other times he wants us to see through it. He makes it very clear. Um, in this in this one, he's he's trying to trick us, but we're we're seeing through it. The mind is the body, and the body is the mind. Okay, so do not emancipate your mind before your body or separately from your body emancipate your body and in fact we um, personally i like to do this i like to sit down i like to think about things i like to contemplate and then i also like to meditate and loosen my brain and get closer to the don't know mind right that is emancipating my mind before my body that's it's working on my mind but it's also very effective to just work on the body to just do yoga to just do let's say ballet or something to become an expert on your body to to train your body to eat very healthily and, and to do all the things that you need to make sure that your body is well to sleep um, to drink a lot of water and of course you can go to the more extreme version you can be vain completely vain you can um, do all the things that you need to do to be a, a very hot instagram model um, all of these things are viable ways to getting into this deep realization. However you do it, doesn't matter. But uh, the trick is that you want your body and your mind to be free. Uh, <laughs> when of course they're both the same, but there is a distinction. It's, it gets a little tricky, but they're, they're the same, but there is a distinction. When both the body and mind are free, even gods and spirits ignore worldly power. This is saying that the praise, praise is completely unnecessary. You don't need praise when the body and mind are free. You don't need the gods and spirits to accept or understand or to shower you with happy thoughts about your worldly power. The worldly power doesn't matter at that point. Once you have complete freedom, you're completely free and you're free from praise and you're free from blame and you're free from all those things. I'm going to continue and try to make this a little bit more practical for your everyday life. And if you can think of any applications for your life, go ahead and hit me down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. So first, um, about the mind created reality, of course, that is, that is far out to, to say that you can reverse instantiate the past by thinking now. 
um, but we don't have to go so crazy. We can think about this in different ways. We've talked about the power of doubt a bit before in these koans. Uh, that theme is being highlighted a lot right now. If you think the person named Daitsuchisho Buddha did not become a Buddha, then your thought is what is changing the reality. And this is very similar to, for example, when you have a loving wife and you think that your wife doesn't love you, she doesn't love you. I, I want to be clear here saying that what you think is going to be changing how you interact in the world and it's going to be changing your own mental state. It's going to be changing everything about you. Your doubts are going to be restricting you. When you think that you're not going to pass your math test, you're going to have some trouble passing that math test. When you think that you're not pretty, you're going to have a real hard time feeling pretty or being confident, and other people probably aren't going to be seeing you in that way. All of these thoughts are going to be limiting your, your life, and they're going to become oftentimes self-fulfilling prophecies. So in this case, this guy is wondering why Zazen isn't working. Why is meditation not working? Um, it doesn't work for this guy, and it's not going to work for me. Why isn't it going to be working? That's going to lead to his meditation failing because he's looking for something to work, looking for something to change. What would happen, I wonder, if you don't have these thoughts? That is what we want to fundamentally get to. This is why we want to meditate so that we can we can sort of detach. We can interact in a non-attached way with our own thoughts. If you want a little bit more on the subject on how thoughts can change your reality, check out case four, the barbarian with no beard. It's very similar in this sense. Another thing that we want to do is we really want to try not to be distracted by others' progress when um, getting healthy behavior. So like I said, the, the monk is sort of questioning his own meditation practice by pointing out somebody else who has not progressed in the way that he thinks is appropriate based on the meditation. This is something that we may do in our everyday lives. So we may think to ourselves, I do want to eat healthy, but I have a friend who has been eating healthily and they're still not healthy, they're still fat or something like that. Um, and that is going to distract you from doing the things that you know you need to be doing. Or, um, of course, this can apply to yourself. You want to get beyond the dualities. You may not be referring to somebody else. So you may say something like, I have slept well in the past. However, that did not lead to me feeling better. Therefore, I'm not going to sleep well in the future. I'm not going to pay attention to my own sleep. We have different layers of knowledge here. We know that eating well and sleeping well is going to improve your life no matter what. Right? It's just going to improve your life. But we also have this other layer of knowledge of of looking at maybe our past selves or looking at other people who we project into them the responsibility of a thousand scientific studies. We, we project to them or we project to our past selves some universality. So we say that I know that sleeping well will change my life and make me feel better. However, last week I tried sleeping well one time and it didn't really do much for me at all. That thinking, that whole process, it's completely limiting your progress in life. And in this case, of course, he's saying, this Zen guy, this guy, this guy's a Zen master, and yet he's still an alcoholic, or yet he still gets angry. Or if you're listening to these stories, you know, you're still cutting off fingers and you're still killing cats and all this stuff. But all that is happening is you're distracting yourself. You're distracting yourself from yourself with yourself because it's all mind created, but we don't need to get that crazy. You're distracting yourself from some imagining, some hypothetical other people with the similar but not quite similar problems. If I say something like, you need to do what makes you happy, and then you come back to me with saying, well, what if psychopaths did things that made them happy? You're completely missing the point. These psychopaths that you think about are completely imaginary. And then, of course, there are going to be people who uh, <laughs> say that psychopaths are not imaginary. They're real people. And then, no, 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 it's all imaginary. Everything that you're thinking about is a distraction from you doing the thing that you need to do to feel better, which is to sit down and do zazen for 10 kalpas. Uh, 10 kalpas, I want to say, is a really long time. So in this sense, knowledge is really bad. If you understand that sleep is good for you, if you think that eating healthy is good for you, that is extremely, extremely bad because you're also going to have counter evidence, which is not good evidence, but you're going to have counter evidence to the fact that you ate strawberries and vegetables one day and you were fatter the next day or you felt worse. Or one day you got eight hours of sleep, but you felt groggy the next day. This is, this is more evidence for the counter, even though it's not very good evidence. Evidence. You don't want knowledge. Knowledge is bad. Get rid of knowledge. Realization is what you need. Realization is good. And the way that you get realization is you stop thinking. 
Please continue your journey outside of thought with this playlist on the Moomon Con and hit the round icon to subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching, and that's it for this video.